Shalom, shalom, sisters. First and foremost, got to give all honor and glory and praises to the Most High God of Israel. Kahal Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. Lord willing, y'all are doing well in the spirit and enduring and watching the times. I thought that this lesson that I've been meditating on for probably about two, three weeks now was very fitting to bring out now that we're coming closer and closer into Passover season. So... This is titled, This is a Game Changer in Your Walk with the Most High. This is a Game Changer in Your Walk with the Most High. And I'm going to bring out the first precept, Galatians 6 and 2. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. So we must bear one another's burdens in this thing. We must bear one another's burdens in this truth, because it helps us to be able to fight stronger fight longer and fight better when we have help in the spirit and in the physical because two is better than one and that's ecclesiastes 4 and 9 i'm gonna get that in a second but let me harp on this for a minute because when we have help in the spirit that can be a determinator us helping a sister who's at her lowest point, she may feel like, you know, this is just too much. I have been through this, this, and this. Things don't seem like it's going to get better. Whatever the case is, and you swoop in and you be that sister, being your sister's keeper in the spirit, you can help that sister stay in this thing. That's how much power that sisterhood holds, that being there for one another and bearing one another's burdens holds is very, very, very important and vital. And the most I wouldn't have put it in the scriptures if it wasn't important. So there's no need to, you know, have to carry a heavy load because Christ said that his yoke is light. His yoke is light. But getting back to Ecclesiastes 4 and 9, it reads, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Two are better than one. The more the merrier. The more the merrier. And if we have, you know, our sisters on our side to help pray for us, fast for us, read with us, you know, even in the physical, you know, a sister may give you alms or you may give a sister alms because it's, it's, it's a two-way street. It's a two-way street. Y'all are helping each other. You're bearing her burdens. She's bearing your burdens. And now y'all are able to fight a little bit longer in the spirit. Fight a little bit longer in this wicked captivity. Y'all have a good reward for your labor. Lord willing, the kingdom. Verse 10. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he has not another to help him up. Woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he has not another to help him up. That's deep right there. If you're by yourself, if you call yourself, you know, saying, oh, I'm not dealing with any other sisters because this one sister did me this way, this, this, and that. Oh, you want to put up walls and you don't want to open up to a sister because maybe oh, you haven't known her for three years or whatever the case is. You can't be like that. In this truth, we got to be new women. We got to renew our minds. We got to be more spiritual. Everything isn't so carnal. Oh, I don't know this sister for, you know, six months. I can't open up to her. I can't ask her to pray for me on, you know, whatever, me being some more submissive. No, that's not the spirit to have about it. If you see that that sister, she's trying her best to abide in the fear of the Lord. You know, she's diligent. You know, she's doing what she's supposed to do. Why not confide in that sister? Ask that, ask for help for that sister. Why not? And that's just going into humbling yourselves down. Humbling ourselves down to the most high and showing like, hey, you know, Lord, I can't do it by myself. I can't do it alone. I need you to help me. And the most high works through people. And we're going to get, get into that. We're going to get into that later on. Let's read verse 11. Ecclesiastes 4 and 11. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. 
and a threefold cord cord lock you a threefold cord is not quickly broken that is powerful that is powerful so how much more say you got an army you got an army and you a one man band against a legion of demons even in the physical that's like you know why even fight why even fight? And that's how Satan gets some of our sisters. Satan gets some of our sisters because they, they isolate themselves. And that's like the number one thing that I see. The first thing I see when sisters are about to fall out of this thing, because I've been all praise the most high. I've been in this faith for about going on four years. All praise the most high. Going on four years. The first thing I see, sisters, they stop communicating. They stop communicating with sisters. They stop checking in on sisters. Sisters hit them up. They either don't respond or they keep it real short. Good. How are you? Good. The end of conversation. And the next thing you know, they they wearing immodest clothing and they getting tattoos or, you know, whatever. Madness. Celebrating the birthday. All types of madness. So that's, it's important. It's important to speak to one another in this truth and bear one another's burdens and i'm gonna pull that verse in malachi after um i continue on my point but going back to that being that one person against this legion of demons how much more you got two it's you and another sister and then you and another sister and then you and another sister boom next thing you know you got you a whole army of sisters praying for you fasting for you reading to you with you whatever the case is that's mighty that's mighty and that's the lord showing his mercy because a lot of sisters don't even have sisters you know whether it's they don't have sisters in their area or you know they are new in the truth and you know they just haven't met anybody yet whatever the case is some sisters pray and beg the most high for sisterhood so do not forsake your sisterhood in this thing just because you're going through it or just because you know they messed up one time and you know whatever we need to be able to put our pride to the side and call on sisters that the Most High has placed in our lives. This is Proverbs 11 and 2. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. So when that pride comes and you get the feeling like you don't need sisters, you don't really need to check on nobody. You don't really got to text nobody back, to, you know, whatever. In the end, you'll be causing shame upon yourself. One that is sin. And we know that there's two types of sin in the book of Syrac or Ecclesiasticus chapter 4 and verse 21. For there is a shame that bringeth sin, and there is a shame which is glory and grace. So we want that shame that's glory and grace. You want to be able to have that shame to where you can go to a sister and be like, hey sis, you know, I done fell in the spirit, I done fell some temptation, the lust of the flesh, whatever the case is. Please pray for me. Can you pull a fast with me? Can you please send me some precepts on this? That's a shame that is glory and grace. Because you're humbling yourself down before the eyes of the Most High. And showing that you want to be a better servant of Him. But if you have that shame to where you're like, Dang, I done fell. I done messed up. You know, oh, I can't tell nobody about this. Well, it really is crazy to even think about that or think think like that because the Most High's eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, roughly paraphrasing in the book of Syrac. So you don't want to have that shame that bringeth sin. You're so ashamed that you don't tell nobody, and next thing you know, you win the world. You're going to fail to even more sin. And now the Lord has a sword prepared for you because you went from righteousness to sin. I'm going to get that. I'm going to get both of those really quick. I'm going to get them both. I'm going to get them both. Okay. The book of Syrac, chapter 23 and verse 19. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men and knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts. Come on. So the, you, we can't be fearing what Said, oh, so I don't know what the sister's gonna think about me. And no, no, we need to be fearing what the most high is gonna be thinking about us if we don't humble down and repent and use the people that he's given us. And then the other one, 
see what had a brain fart. What's the other one I was gonna pull? Mm. Mm. Oh, Sakia. It just came back to mind. Wait a minute. All right. The book of Sirach, chapter 26 and verse 28. There be two things that grieve my heart, and the third maketh me angry. A man of war that suffereth poverty, and men of understanding that are not set by, and one that returneth from righteousness to sin. The Lord prepareth such an one for the sword. Plain. So we must check our spirit and become lowly enough to be open to hear what godly counsel that sisters have. Being humble and vulnerable at times helps us helps bring us to that shame that is glory and grace. Imagine the Most High giving you mighty sisters that can pray, fast, read, for and with you, and you decide not to say anything or be brief, and then you end up in an even worse situation than you were before. Or Lord forbid you fall out of the truth. That's that shame that bringeth sin. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, and verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. So we got to be able to humble ourselves, y'all. First to the Most High, of course, and then to our sisters. Right before we fall away, you exalt yourself. Ooh, so I can Right before you fall away, you exalt yourself, whether knowingly or unknowingly. So before you fall out this truth, unknowingly or knowingly, you exalt yourself thinking, you know, I'm too good for counsel. Because that's what you're saying. That's what you're saying, whether you think it, you're saying it or you don't feel like you're saying it. That's what you're ultimately saying. That's how the most high is seeing it. You think you're good, too good for counsel. You think you're too good for counsel. And none of us are too good for counsel. So we don't want to be too private, quote unquote, to where you can't ask for help when you know you need it. You know you need fasting. You know you need prayer. You know you haven't read in three weeks, two weeks, one, two, three days. You know you need help. So ask for it. It's the difference between being private and being discreet with whatever you're dealing with. Of course, you don't have to spill every detail and spill your whole life and whatever to everyone. But have that one counselor, at least, on your side. That one sister that, you know, you proved. You done proved her as a friend. You know, she's a mighty sister, like I was saying before. You know, hey, Shalom, sis. Dot, 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 This is what I'm going through. Can you pray for me? Can you pray for my, my faith? Can you pray for my fear of the Lord? Whatever it is. And that's being discreet if you don't want to, you know, go into detail. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 6. Be in peace with many. Nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand. So just going back to having that one counselor, you don't have a half a million people in your business. You know, you can be discreet. But nonetheless, ask for help. Sisterhood is here for this reason, because we need it. Many sisters follow out his faith for different reasons. A lot of those reasons come from isolating yourself from the Most High and people of the Most High. So don't neglect your sisters. And when sisters fall away from the Most High, one of the first things Satan gets them to do, like I was saying earlier, is to distance yourself from your sisters, your family, whether it be spiritual or physical, and even your husband, which is over you. That's your head of protection. You should be able to, you know, confide in your husband. You know, y'all should be able to fight these demons together. You know, Satan is very crafty. He's very, very crafty, and he'll make it seem like nobody understands what you're going through, or as if people would judge you, or you know, have you feeling like, oh, I don't want to keep going to this sister. I've already gone to the sister about this problem. If you're still dealing with that problem, then keep asking for help. No sister that's genuine and really, truly loves you and fears the Most High is gonna be like, nah, sis. You stop coming. Please stop paying me up about that. Please. Now, it's a difference if you aren't trying. You're not trying to put in the work. You're not trying to grow and show prog progress in what you're struggling with. Because all things take time. 
But other than that, no, no sister should be turning away any sister that's asking for help. That's off. So you shouldn't, nobody should feel like a burden to anybody. And the most I put different people in our lives for many reasons. And a sister may go through it to help another sister when they go through it. So that's going back to that Ecclesiastes 4 and 9, you know, two are better than one. When the fellow, you know, the one fellow, he falls down, you help him up. You already, you know, you you have strength. You have strength in that moment, so you're able to help your sister up. And then when you fall down, your sister can help you up. It's plain. It's, it's, it's a way that the Most High has constructed us, constructed everything. That's how he has it, and it's beautiful. It's so beautiful that he's granted us these sisters in our lives and the most high we all know works in wonderful ways because he ultimately puts the words in certain people to help us it's him that gives sisters the words to say when you ask for that counsel when you ask for advice whatever it is you ask for prayer and sisters give you an exhortation that's the most high speaking to us that's the most high speaking to us and they're pulling the scriptures they're saying thus said the lord they're not telling you nothing off that's the most high. The most high can use anybody to speak to us. And we see that multiple times throughout the scriptures. And this is the book of Matthew chapter 10 and verse 20. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father, which speaketh in you. Plain. Going into what I just, what I just said. It's the father, the spirit of the father that speaketh in us. All praise the most high. Call you. How about you? Hallelujah. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And we know that Satan likes division. We know that Satan comes to kill, steal, destroy. We're not, we're not feeding into that. No. We know that Passover season comes up. We know that that's known as sifting season in the nation. Sifting season. We're Satan trying to sift our people out. Because as, close, as closer as we get, each day we get closer and closer to the return of Yahweh Shai, to Christ. Each day. And each day, people fall out of the truth. Fall out of the truth. Fall out of the truth. But at the same time, the Most High has a just balance according to Proverbs 11 and 1. So that means just as people fall out of the truth, fall out of the truth, there's people coming in the truth, coming into the truth. And we're, we're disposable. We're disposable. For lack of better terms, to the Most High, the Most High does not need us. So we need to be fighting and showing the Most High, like, I want my spot in the kingdom. I'm not trying to take this faith for granted. I'm not trying to take my chance of getting eternal life for granted. No. Stand up, fight against Satan, and lean on your sisters. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 16. Take heed to yourselves. That your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. So we got to take heed to ourselves, take heed to these scriptures, and don't let our heart, which is deceitful, trick us into thinking that we don't need anybody, that we got this. We don't need nobody. We, You know, you can, you can do bad all by yourself. No, you can't. But technically, you can't. You know, you can do bad all by yourself. You do a lot of bad. By yourself, trying to fight by yourself. No. No. Lean on your sisters. You don't have to fight by yourself, so why would you choose to? And even Christ had his disciples with him in the hour of temptation. And this is this is a scripture that's been speaking to me lately, y'all. Speaking to me lately. I've been meditating on this one. I love the scripture so much. It's the book of Luke chapter 22 and verse 28. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I feel like this is many fold. It's many fold. This is red lettering, by the way. So this is right out of Christ's mouth. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And that's mighty. That's mighty. You see all these, even on the carnal aspect, you see all these movies. You know, they got, you know, maybe two or three or like a group of friends. They going through it. You know, they came from humble beginnings. And then at the end, they get, you know, whatever they, whatever, the, that victory. That victory at the end. And they all, 
you know, do a group hug and jumping up and down. Oh, we did it. All the things we went through and all the tough times. And it, that's how we got to be. That's how we got to be in the spirit, though. We got to appreciate those that have continued with us and are willing to continue with us in our temptations when we're about to go off, when we need counsel before we go off, when we, you know, are thinking about, oh, I haven't having thought, like saying like something, whatever it is. So I like, yeah, if you haven't thought about going back into the world or whatever the temptation is, because it's a thousand, just a thousand ways to be tempted. But appreciate those that continue with you in your temptations or are showing effort to. The book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 8. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. And bearing your sister's burden is loving your sister. And vice versa. Owe no man anything. You don't want it to be like, it, it, I'm telling y'all, it's a bad feeling. It is a bad feeling. I can imagine. Seeing a sister fall out of the truth and thinking, dang, I could have prayed for that sister more. Dang, I could have read with that sister more. I could have reached out more. I could have did what well, could have, should have, would have. It's no could have, should have, would have. Love your sister. And I'm speaking to myself as well. We got to do better with checking in on one another. You know, being there for one another. Because we don't want to owe no man anything. Granted, yes, we all have to work out our own salvation. But, you know, all throughout the scriptures, you know, Paul, Jeremiah, all these, all these people, they love, even Judah, they love their people so much. You got to be willing to fight for your people. Yes, fight your good fight too, but help each other. We all fighting in this thing. There's power in numbers. And this is the book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. So don't work no ill towards your neighbor. And even though it's, it might not be, you know, oh, you done scammed your sister or whatever. But, you know, neglecting to respond to that sister. You know, she going through it or, you know. Neglecting check on her, you know she's going through a rough time or whatever the case is. Just love your sister. Love your sister and fulfill the law. This is the book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself so you would want somebody to check on you you would want somebody to pray for you you would want somebody to fast for you and you know to war in the spirit for you on your behalf so just love your neighbor as yourself think about dang this is really going through it. I know if I was going through that certain situation, I would want somebody praying and fasting for me. Let me do that for that sister because I love that sister. So it's, it's plain. It's plain. It's all throughout the scriptures, y'all. It's all throughout the scriptures. This wasn't going to be long. I'm almost done. I'm going to pull out one precept and close it up. But, yeah, we... We got to just learn how to serve one another, just like how Christ served us. He did the ultimate, the ultimate act of love and sacrifice himself. So the least we could do is bear one of those burdens in this thing. And I'm going to get, I'm going to get one more. I want to get that uh, verse in Malachi. I'm going to get it right now before I forget. Because <laughs> I got my brain. Okay. This is the book of Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. I love this scripture so, so much. And if you've been around me, you've probably been hearing me bring this out a lot. Oh, Luke. 
22 and 28. But it's really mighty. It's really mighty because it says that they that fear the Lord, if we say that we fear the Lord, we should be speaking often one to another. If we fear the Lord, we're going to love our sisters as we love ourselves. If we fear the Lord and we want the Lord to hear us and to hearken unto us, we need to be speaking often one to another. Two is better than one. We need to be giving and getting counsel. The Most High, he, he, he likes that. He loves that. Sisterhood. Family. Depending on one another. Leaning on one another. Sacrificing things for one another. You know, that's the spirit that the Most High, he sups with. And that's what we need to be supping with. So, going back to the lesson, we've been called into liberty. Going back to that Galatians 5 and 13. By Christ giving us the gift of repentance. But we can't take this grace. <clears throat> so I can. But we can't take this grace for granted. We must do everything we can. To stay blameless and help our sisters to do so too. Love is one in the kingdom. Not only for you. But your sisters too. We can't be selfish in this thing y'all. We can't be selfish. And be like oh shoot well that's her. She wouldn't go back in the world. She will forget it. No she, she done made up her mind. No pray for that sister. Fast for that sister. Check on her. You know? Might even have to get in her chat. Might ruffle up a little bit. Hey, sis, you know, we in the end times. This is not the time to be looking back. This is not the time to be looking back. Please, 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 sisters, keep a watch on prophecy. We're commanded to watch prophecy. You don't got to, you know, understand the deep, dark parables or anything like that. But keep watch of the prophecies. Read the scriptures. You know, ask your elder, your husband for understanding of these prophecies so you can be able to watch efficiently and know the times that you're coming. Because our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, is coming back very, 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 very soon. This is not the time to fall out the truth. This is not the time to, oh, go in the world real quick and, you know, I'll try again later once I got some more strength, once I get my mind right. No. No. The time is now. Do it now. Love is wanting better for your sisters and for them to stay on this path with the Most High. Love fulfills the law, in turn, making us righteous and obedient. So if we want to fulfill the law, we got to move in the spirit of love. If we want to be righteous and obedient, we got to move in the spirit of love. This is all full circle. And this is my closing precept. The book of Romans, chapter 10 and verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. So that's got to be our prayer, sisters. Lord willing, we can all pray that Israel will be saved. We know that it will be only a remnant that will be saved. Only one-third of our people is going to make it. But we got to pray. We got to pray for mercy. We got to pray for mercy. We got to pray for our sisters. And Lord willing, you sisters make it to the kingdom. Most high willing, I can see it. Lord willing, Lord willing, Lord willing. We can just be there for one another and bear one another's burdens in this thing. I love y'all so very much. And hopefully y'all are having a blessed week in the spirit. And those that are getting ready for the Sabbath, Sabbath, hey, hey, we almost there. And call Yahweh Shai. I love y'all sisters. And Shalom.